In this video, we will study the momentum and impulse. We will derive the relationship between these two quantities, the impulse momentum theorem, and then we will apply to some application from them. Okay, so we'll start. Uh, take note that according to the Newton's second law of motion, that the net external force is the product of the mass times the acceleration, which means that if you multiply the mass of the bombing object by the acceleration, the result is always the net external force. And remember that by definition, the acceleration is the change in velocity per time interval. This is actually, the acceleration is the amount of changing the velocity with respect to time. Okay, so therefore it should be dv over dt. So if we replace this acceleration to this second law of Newton, the equation now becomes the, the net external force is equal to the product of the mass times the change in velocity per time interval. If we transform this one in such that m will be inside the derivative, so we come up this that the derivative of the mass times velocity with respect to time is equal to the net external force. Now, the product of the mass times velocity is actually the momentum. If you multiply the mass of the moving particle by its velocity, that is momentum, which means that the greater the velocity, the greater the momentum. Or if you have a greater mass, you have a greater momentum. And remember that velocity is a vector quantity. So if you multiply a vector by a scalar, the result is always a vector. So therefore, momentum is also a vector quantity. So it has a magnitude and it has direction. So the product of the mass times velocity is the definition of momentum. So it should be uh, written in a small letter P with bar arrowhead up above because this is a vector. And the mass is a scalar times the velocity. Which means that if you are traveling north with 100, 100 newton magnitude and another particle is moving in the south with the same 100, oh, traveling, traveling with a 100 kilometers per hour south, then the other is going to north, the same magnitude, they have a different momentum. Why? Because the direction is different. So take note that, again, momentum is a vector quantity. It's the product of the mass times the velocity. So the question now is, what is the unit of the momentum? Take note that we multiply the, ma the mass times the velocity. And again, uh, momentum is a vector quantity. So therefore, it can be expressed in terms of x. So we have the px times the mass times the velocity along x is actually the component of the of, of the momentum along x. In y axis, the product of the mass times by is also py. Also with the product of the mass times the velocity along z, component of velocity, because velocity is a vector, so we have another component of the momentum. If you find the vector sum of these components, the result should be the momentum. Okay, so what is the unit of this quantity? Now look at this one. This is mass. The unit is kilogram. And this is meter per second. Okay? So it should be kilogram meter per second. This is the unit of the momentum. Okay? So again, this is a vector quantity. So we have to provide a side of magnitude. The magnitude is the... Uh, mass times the magnitude of the velocity. And the direction should be what? The direction of the velocity also. Whatever direction of the velocity will be the direction of the momentum. And take note, the unit is kilogram meter per second. So therefore, what will happen to this equation? If we replace this with the momentum P, this will become dP over dt. This, the meaning of this is, this is the change in momentum per time. 
interval. Infinitesimal time interval. So, therefore, uh, this one is the... This is what this is the this this is the second Newton second law in terms of momentum. This is the net force acting on the body. Okay, so take note the second law says the mass times acceleration. So therefore, this is another second law, but this is in terms of the momentum. According to this result, that the net external force on the particle is the change in momentum per time interval. Okay? So, take note that if you have the velocity and you have the mass, you have always the momentum. If you start from 1 and you end up at 2, you have the momentum initial and we have the momentum final. So, if you are, if one particle collides to the other, so we have the before collision and we have the after collision and we have the during the collision the during the collision it is that force so the net force once uh, collision occurs then the net force is the change in momentum per time interval so therefore we can say that the rate of change of the particle this is the rate of change of the particle momentum so, look at this result. What's the meaning of this? If your change is a very, very small, what will, happen to, what will happen to the force? Because the force, the net external force is directly proportional to the change in momentum. Which means that if you have a lesser change, you have a lesser force during collision. Okay? Now, if you have greater amount of, of of change meaning what if the final momentum is greater much greater compared to the initial then you have a greater force so in order to reduce the force all you need to do is to make the change in momentum be small as small as you can because the smaller the change the smaller the force but take note that the force is inversely proportional to the time dt now is the time of collision so when when two particle collide if we have one particle another particle will collide during the collision there must be a force acting on this particle which is towards this direction while this one will apply a force to this object so take note that every force applied here will be the same force the third law of newton so if the collision Time, the time of collision is is a very very small time very very small period of time then the net force on this object is greater so if you want to have a smaller force during collision then you have to increase the time you have to increase because the greater the time the formula the the force is change in momentum per time interval so that if you have a greater time of collision where where in the time that the object collides then the force is small but if you have a very very small change then your net external force is greater now one application of this is we why is it that we 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 are are required to wear helmets when you are riding motorcycle the reason is it is to protect the rider from danger because during collision your head is in contact to the uh, other particle so if if your accident uh, take note that whatever the net external force applied to your vehicle will be the force on the radar also so therefore if you collide the object you are you will experience the force net external force on the vehicle so therefore in order to protect that from from danger we have to wear the helmet and the helmet is is made of styrofoam inside why because the moment 
the accident occur, then the time of collision with your head and the and the helmet will be longer in time because it is styrofoam. We have the flexibility or the elastic property of the of the styro. So it it ah, sorry, it uh, increase the time in contact. So therefore, since longer time, we have smaller amount of force. That's why helmet is should should have the styrofoam inside. There is no helmet with purely a steel because if you are in contact with the steel, your head directly to the to the steel, any force applied to the steel will be absorbed to your head. But if you have the styro, then the contact now, the time of collision now be will will be delayed. So therefore the amount of force experienced by your head is small amount of force. Airbag, why is it that we have the airbag in car during accident? Why? Because during accident the airbag will uh, airbag will inflate inflate automatically inflate because of the sensor. So take note that the amount of force during the collision of the rider of the of the car will be the same amount of force will experience to the rider. So uh, if you are a driver, whatever force on the car to the colliding object, then it should be the force also received by the riders. So in order to prevent from danger, we need the airbag. Why? Because using airbag, you are increasing the time of collision because you are in the bag. So therefore, the the time of collision now is longer time. So if you have a longer time, again, your force experience during the collision is a very, very small and approximately zero as you travel. Once the velocity is zero, then there is no momentum in that part. Okay? So that's the meaning of the net external force is the change in momentum per time interval. But this is a very, very important formula. Remember, do not forget this formula. If you are, why, why we should bend our knee from jumping? Why, why is we, we are required to bend our knee? The reason is to delay the time. The moment you delay the, delay the time, so therefore, the net external force experienced by your your body will reduce just like a sprain. Okay? If you jump from second floor to the ground and imagine, don't it, try, try to imagine what will happen if you will not bend your knee. Or let us say jumping on this table, on this table only, to the ground. Try it, but don't do it. <laughs> do not bend your knee. So what will happen? What will happen? Just imagine a grip their force experienced by your uh, body. You can feel it. You can feel it. So in order to reduce the force of collision, the collision is when you drop the floor, take note that you are colliding. So therefore, there must be the net external force on it. So the only way to reduce it is to bend your knee just like a spring. In such that you, your velocity will reduce to zero. Okay, so the change in momentum with respect to time is the net external force. Okay, so this is we call this the rate change, the rate of change because we are uh, we are measuring the change in momentum per time. Okay, so going back to this formula, the net external force is the change in momentum per time interval. If you take the diagonal product of this we can see that the net external force multiplied the time is just the change in momentum. Okay? So remember, the summation of F means the force during collision. When, when two objects collides, the force on this object is the net external force. And the time of collision is dt during the time. Now if you multiply that two, 
force times the time, we call that as the impulse. Okay? Big letter J. The product of the force times the time is the impulse. Big letter J. This is the definition of the definition of impulse, which means that the impulse is the net external force times the time. This is infinitesimal time by the force is J, or it can be the change in time or the time interval. This is the definition of the impulse. Take note, momentum is mass times the velocity. Impulse is force times time. But that force, it is the force during collision. And the time is the time during collision. Now, once the particle separate now each other, the force will disappear because there is no contact. It happens only if there is a collision. So, during collision, the product of the force times the time is the impulse. Okay? So, take note that impulse is also a vector quantity. Why? Because this is force is a vector and T is scalar. So, therefore, uh, multiplying the uh, scalar by the vector is always a vector. So, therefore, we will have the component of J for the impulse along X and along Y along Z. So, it should be if x dt, gx. If y, <coughs> G, jt. If y, dt is jy. Or if z, dt is uh, jz. So, therefore, these are the components of the impulse along x, along y, along z. If the particle travels only in one direction, then see it as jx only. And these components are zero. But if, if there is a component along x, along y, then you have to take the net or the vector sum of that which component. Now, what's the unit? Okay, again, if you are asked what is the unit, then look at the definition. The definition of the impulse is force times time. So, what's the unit of force? Newton. And the time is second. So, therefore, very simple. Then the, the unit of impulse is Newton seconds. Okay? The amount of force times the time is impulse. Now, if, if this force is constant, okay, if this force is constant, then what will happen is, okay, going with this, this problem. So, therefore, if this is constant, okay, you say, say it that J is equal to dp. Why? Because the change at the force times the time is the impulse. So, the impulse is just the change in momentum. So, change in momentum. Uh, take note, we have the before collision and we have after collision. So, before the object collide to, to each other, so we have the momentum because the momentum is the mass times the velocity. Now, during collision, what will happen? It separates to each other. So, if, if, if it happens, then we have the final momentum. momentum. So, if you take the change of that, the change in momentum is equal to the impulse. And remember, impulse is force times the time of collision. So, therefore, the, the final momentum affects the, affects the activity on the collision. So why? Because there was force on it. If you have smaller force during collision, then what will happen is, uh, smaller smaller amount of velocity after the collision okay so then uh, take note that this is chain infinitesimal change or it can be delta p delta means the change in momentum there is and this is infinitesimal while this is a change so regardless of small or large we call that as change but if we have a very very small see it infinitesimal change. So, we call this as the impulse momentum theorem. Impulse momentum theorem. If you remember in our our videos on the work energy theorem, we studied work. And after that, we studied, we studied the work energy, the relation between two. Take note that the kinetic energy, the change in kinetic energy is work done. Here, the change in momentum is impulse so uh, they're quite similar 
but take note they are not the same why because work is killer impulse is a victor and remember also that momentum is mass times velocity so the change in velocity or the change in momentum is impulse but momentum is mass times velocity work done by the system is change in kinetic energy kinetic energy change means final minus initial the kinetic energy is one half mv squared and this one is mass times velocity only so the product of the mass times velocity is momentum okay so final minus initial momentum the answer is impulse okay so that's it we call this as the impulse momentum theory. and this is very important okay? just like in work energy theory very important because we derive the conservation of energy using the principle and the relation between the work and the energy so since this is change in pace so we can say that the 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 impulse is the final momentum minus initial and again this is our uh, this is a vector quantity so we must have along x along y and along z so if we have the activity is only talking about one dimension straight lines so or see it as gx component only and the uh, gy and G, j uh, jz is zero okay now what will happen if the force is non constant not non constant force so if you remember previously we see it constant force and we call that the change in momentum is or uh, the change in momentum is joule ah uh, no sorry the uh, impulse okay now what will happen if if we consider a non-constant force what do you think is it the same if you remember the revisions the, the revision of the work energy theorem first we assume that the force is constant okay Please recall, the force is constant. Then, it results that the work done by the system is just what? The change in kinetic energy. And we derive that when the force is constant. And we evaluate it if the force is non-constant. And the result is the same. So, regardless of constant or non-constant, the, the work energy theorem will be applied whether constant force or non-constant force what about in the impulse is it the same if we have the non-constant force let's find out okay so going back to this statement the the net external force is dp over dt okay take the color product again so again the result is the product of the force times the time is impulse this is impulse okay so if we integrate this both sides what will happen this will become the integral of the net because this is not a constant okay this is a variable force so therefore take the integral of that the, the limit should be t1 to t2 because the infinitesimal is time while this one the limit should be in terms of momentum because this is dp so take note that this the integral of the force okay for a non non uniform force or 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 none this is not constant not constant force so therefore the integral of force times the infinitesimal t from t1 to t2 is impulse this is impulse okay this is impulse while this one it should be okay so this is the this is impulse so therefore uh, again if we substitute this one this will becomes j so this will becomes j the integral from p1 to p2 which is the change in momentum the integral from p1 to t2, t2 of the change in momentum is equivalent to the impulse okay evaluate integral the result is the impulse is again the change in momentum final minus initial so therefore the same okay regardless of the force whether the force is constant or non-constant the impulse momentum theorem is what? J is the change in momentum. Final minus initial momentum 
is the say is equivalent to the impulse. Okay. Now remember that the momentum is mass times velocity. So if if the mass and velocities are given, then we can always calculate the impulse. Okay. Or suppose the impulse is given and given the initial. So therefore, we can always find the final momentum. Okay, so we can utilize this formula. Do not forget this. But this is very, very important. This is our purpose of this video to understand the change in or the impulse momentum theorem. Because after this, okay, this video, we will go with the conservation of linear momentum and we will use this one. Okay, so this, just like in, in work energy or the conservation of energy, the conservation of energy use the work energy theorem and the definition of work. Okay? This one also, we will use the conservation of energy and the, the definition of the impulse also. And the definition of the the uh, momentum. So therefore, again, the change, the momentum is the change, uh, the, the impulse is the change in momentum. Final minus initial. Okay, let's apply this uh, principle to this problem. In a certain track and uh, and field event, shot put has a mass of 3.7 kilograms. Okay, so suppose this is the shot put whose mass is 7.3 kilograms. Then uh, this is this was released with a velocity of 15. Okay, the velocity is 15 meters per second. This is at an angle of 40 degrees from the horizontal. So therefore, this is the amount of velocity applied to to this object to this uh, shot put and it has an angle of 40 degrees from the horizontal so therefore this should be horizontal and it should be vertical so the angle of that is 40 degrees okay so what's the question what are the initial horizontal and vertical component of the momentum in this shot put so what do you do okay very easy take note momentum is the product of mass times the velocity see therefore Remember, we have the mass and we have the velocity. Okay, but take note, this the velocity is not lying along x, lying along y. So therefore, we, uh, this velocity should have the component along x and along y. The reason is because velocity is a vector. Okay, so it must have component along x and component along y. So therefore, the question of what are the initial Horizontal and vertical components momentum, okay, initial, because this velocity is the initial velocity. Once released to air, this will reduce above. But take note, as it moves down, it, twist, it will move, it, it has an increasing speed because this is, it undergoes projectile motion, okay. So, but before, beforehand, the initial is 15 meter per second. So, therefore, all you need to do is to use the formula. So, see it, the x component px, it should be m times vx. While the y component py is mass, mass times by. What, but what is vx? Now, take note, this is the, the component of x is what? V along x. It should be cosine of 40. So, 15 cosine of 40. While by is 15 sine. Okay, so substitute the values. The mass is 7.3. Multiply by the velocity, but the velocity should be component along x, so it should be 15 cosine of 40. While, okay, calculate the result is 83.88 uh, kilogram meter per second. Take note of the unit, kilogram meter per second. Okay, now for the y component, it should be the mass times the velocity along y, but the y is uh, 15 sine of 40. And calculate it, and we have 70.39 kilogram meter per seconds. These are the answers to the problem. Okay? So, very important, the definition of the momentum, because this is the question is only talking about momentum. So, not forget the formula. It should be the mass times the velocity. And you have to consider that momentum is vector. So, therefore, you have to find the uh, component along x and along y. Now, in this case, this is positive. Why? Because this is towards, so this is, should be, in the vector, this is i hat, 83.88 i hat. So, you can add, you can add here in order to complete the solution. 
because victor so this is positive i hat while this one is above so therefore this is j hat so you have to multiply that by the unit vector because this is the magnitude and this is direction okay the direction of the x component is towards the positive so i hat and the direction of the y component is directly above so therefore this should be positive j hat okay so that's it Another problem. This is problem number two. We have this uh, hockey puck, a mass of 0.16, moving on an IC frictionless. So when we say frictionless, we can ignore the friction. At time is equal to zero, the, the puck is moving to the right with a velocity of 3 meters per second. So therefore, if this is before collision, before it collides. So this is the hockey puck whose mass is 0.16, okay? Then this is traveling initially with to the right, to the right. So, see it, to the right. Uh, okay, so in order to specify direction, so we need to overlay the Cartesian. We have to set the, the Cartesian Y. Take note, we are working with Victor. So, therefore, you have, it's very important to, to consider the Cartesian always for consistency. Now, the event is 3. We have the before, we have the during collision, and we have the after collision. So therefore, every activity uh, use your your assigned Cartesian consistently. Okay. So in this case, so imagine that we have this. The origin is located here. So therefore, the velocity is coming from that going to the right, and this is positive. We cannot we cannot provide positive x unless unless constructed by the Cartesian coordinate system. So the amount of the velocity along x, this is x i hat, i hat y, because this is towards the right, okay? Now problem says, okay, letter A, calculate the velocity of the path, magnitude and direction, after a force, okay? There was a force, okay, acting on the amount of 25 newtons directly to the right. So therefore, the particle is moving to the right. Then there, there was a force applied on it in the amount of 25, okay, directly, the same direction, to the right. Now, the application of force is applied to 0 0.05 seconds, so very small period. So what will happen? Just like, uh, if you are, okay, playing billiard, okay, the contact between the cue ball and the uh, that stick, okay, or taco, we call that a taco. So the, there was a time of collision. So in this in this problem, the time of collision is 0 0.05 seconds. Then uh, okay, so therefore this is during collision. This is the object with with velocity, but Aside from the velocity, we have the force applied by the amount of 25. And according to the problem, the same direction, okay, to the right also. The, the period, period in contact during the collision is 0 0.05. So, that will serve as our delta T. And this is our F. So, this is the force, the net external force applied on this object. And this is the time of collision so we call this as during collision okay now after collision what will happen after collision is this ball will move the same direction okay same mass but take note the velocity now will change because of this applied force even if this is moving at a constant speed because this ic frictionless so therefore supposed to be this particle removed all throughout three meter per second but because of this force what will happen? What do you think what will happen? How much is the final velocity? So to answer this problem is very clear. We need to use the what? The impulse momentum. Why? Because this involves collision. Involves collision. So therefore, in the collision, we have the uh, net external force. There is no force before and there is no force after. The force present only during collision. And according to the problem, it is 25 newtons. Okay, so therefore, 
you are asked how much how much is this velocity after collision so use the impulse momentum theorem so jx okay we we use x because everything now is moving along x only so it's enough for to analyze along x so jx this is the momentum and this is the uh, this is the impulse and this is the change in momentum it should be final minus initial okay where is the initial the initial momentum is before collision okay this is this should be the before so before means it should be uh, before uh, collision the momentum is mass times the velocity so it is simply as 0.16 kilograms times 3 meter per second that's it this is the momentum along x initial now what is momentum along x final it should be after the collision okay it is not the during collision it should be before and after collision because uh, the momentum requirement the change is should be final minus initial so therefore all you need to do now is take note that what is impulse by definition impulse is force times the time okay so therefore we can say that what is gx gx is just the 25 times 0 0.05 okay now what is pxf pxf means the final momentum which will be the mass times alone minus the initial the initial is the mass times the velocity given so the only unknown is this one so therefore okay then substitute the values this is for the force this is for the time dt and this is 16 and this is unknown okay so 0.16 take note that we have to substitute take note the velocity is vector so we have to emphasize the sign so in this case we assume that this is towards this direction so therefore you have to use positive okay if you assume that this is this will be the final direction then go but take note that this you have to change this to negative okay why because you, you are telling us that going to the right positive then going to the left negative so therefore if you do the assumption that is moving to the left this should be ne negative but once calculated now once calculated the if the result is negative, then your assumption is wrong. So you have to change the direction only. Don't recalculate. So in this case, we assume here. So therefore, we, we use positive in calculate. And the answer is positive. So therefore, it is true that this is moving towards the right. In the amount of 10.8. Previously, it is moving only with 3 meters per second. But after collision or during after, after the collision, with the application of the 25 newtons and at a time of collision of 0 0.05 the final velocity now becomes 10.8 meters per second and it is moving towards the right okay very clear that we are able to solve this one because we have the impulse momentum theory that's the purpose of study okay. theoretical will provide you an answer okay this is the power of theory. By the use of the formula, we are able to provide the answer. Now, let us see a little bit. Okay, if the applied force is 12, okay, from 25, is now becomes uh, 12 only, directed to the left. Okay, directed to the left. From 0 to 0 to point. 0 0.05 okay so from 0 to 0 0.05 what is the final velocity what is the final velocity of the pack so all you need to do is to okay uh, almost the same you can use this formula but the, the only difference is if this is towards the force is applied here towards the right okay now this time Problem says that this is towards left, so therefore you have to change it and take note only 12. So therefore, this will become negative. Do not forget the sign because force is a vector. So therefore, the 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 negative sign tells us that the force is now towards the left side. So it is different now if we ignore the sign. Okay, but the time is the same because time is scalar and the velocity. It's the same. This is positive. The only difference is this one. So therefore, uh, okay, calculate again, but 
change now the amount of force. It is now negative 12 times 0 0.05, 16 times velocity, anon, 0.16 times 3. So, therefore, this is not the difference. Okay? And we assume, again, the same assumption that after the collision, still, our, our object is moving to the right. Okay? Now, if the result is positive, then this assumption is correct. But if the result is negative, now it is not true that the particle moves towards the right. Okay, so calculating the uh, result, okay, calculate the, and the answer is negative. So what does it mean? The answer is negative 0.75 meter per second. So therefore, it is not true that this one will move to the right. It should be towards left. Okay? Now, do not change the solution because you will arrive the same answer. Okay? So, if you change this one, then substitute it here, this will become positive, which means that your assumption is correct. You can do it. Okay? So, these are the answers to the problem because the problem is now, now is asking for the amount of the final velocity. And it should be done in after collision. Now, for your practice, try to solve this one. Okay? Try to solve this. This is a very nice problem. In order to apply our work in the, the, the important formulas are the, the impulse is equivalent to the change in momentum. Just like work done is change in kinetic energy. So, impulse is change in momentum. So, final means initial. But what is momentum? Mass times velocity. That's it. Okay? Now, take note that impulse J is what? It is force times the time. So, if if, if force are available, then, then, therefore, you have to use it in the J value. So, therefore, the work energy theorem needs the activity during collision. So, therefore, uh, we, we are required to analyze the activity during the collision. Now, the, ne the next topic now is talking about the uh, conservation momentum. Now, with that, the, the during collision is not applicable. So, we can now ignore the effect of the the during collision and we will focus on the before and final okay so see you in the next video